I attempted my first ever randomizer hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Platinum, but to spice it up even more, I combined it with my first ever co-op Nuzlocke, otherwise known as a Soul Link, but apparently cool terms like that aren't YouTube algorithm friendly. Randomizers completely turn a Pokemon game on its head, changing your starters, wild encounters, and every trainer's team to an absurd degree. Oh, you expected Bidoof? Here's a Groudon instead. Good luck! Combine this with a Soul Link where every Pokemon is paired with your partner's encounter from the same area area in a different file of the game, and if one dies, the other does too. This is going to make for a pretty ridiculously difficult run. Will we be able to get through on our first attempt, or will we continue to lose due to us running into Dragon Rage before the first gym? Well, let's find out. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below if you've ever tried a co-op Nuzlocke, and if you haven't already, make sure to follow the Twitch channel over at twitch.tv slash chaoticmeatballtv, where I did this entire run as well as many others live. But it wouldn't be a soul link without a partner, right? So please, feel free to introduce yourself before we get into it. Thanks, Meatball. Ahoy! My name is Asagiyame. I'm a fish VTuber who enjoys playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Pokemon and eating mac and cheese. Please check out my streams at twitch.tv slash asagiyame and my YouTube at asagiyame. Also, if you thought Meatball was good at Pokemon, <laughs> you guys haven't seen anything yet. Then let's go ahead and see what our starters look like. So, getting onto Route 201 and opening my briefcase reveals three Pokemon to me at complete random, and they end up being Drifloon, Bullpix, and Entei. Hmm, let me think about what I'm gonna be taking for a sec- Yeah, I'm gonna take Entei. Who knows if Youngster Joey's gonna roll up to my doorstep with God and anime on his side, and if he does, I better have some firepower to put him in his place. I open my briefcase up and find Hariyama, Ampharos, and Snover. So, no legendary starter for me. Although my picks aren't too bad, I ended up picking Ampharos. It's pretty quick and have access to paralysis, which is very nice. But it's no legendary. We'll just have to hope that Joey doesn't have anything nice for me. Right after, though, Barry challenges us to a fight, keeping the starters that replace the slot of the original Sinnoh starter that they would have been super effective to ours. Since Entei was in the Chimchar slot, he chose the Piplop slot, which happened to be Vulpix, and while this technically could have posed a problem with Flash Fire, it really doesn't because Entei starts with Bite and Leer. With the former three-shotting Vulpix without taking a single point of damage due to a Tail Whip and flinch in sequence to win our first fight. And to think that would have been even easier if he had gotten Drifloon. We're up with our rival battle. It starts with the battle off with Snow Warning making it hail. I tackled it a few times with Snover just hitting me with a leer. Then suddenly, Snover hits me with one too many razor leaves. My Ampharos is dangerously close to death, but we managed to win the first battle through sheer willpower. Not that it mattered too much though, since after all, the Nuzlocke doesn't actually start until you obtain Pokeballs. So we weren't really threatened here, but the free XP was always nice. There's not much else to do aside from a whole slew of encounters in the early game. Though I should at least mention that TMs are also randomized, making TM27 Return actually turn into Psycho Shift. If anything relevant ends up being useful though, I'll let you know, but for now, just know that your normal staples like early game return on a normal type aren't gonna be here unless they pop up on a later TM. Anyway, encounters end up starting with Ho-Oh from Verity Lakefront. Two legendaries back to back sounds good in theory, but not when Ho-Oh's only move is Whirlwind. Uh, whiffing encounters already. Not good. At least there's plenty more where that came from. Route 202 gives us Slowbro and Slackoth, respectively. Not the best pair, but might prove to be formidable once Slackoth evolves. Route 204 gives us Ekans and Lantern, though Ekans doesn't have Intimidate, so I can't see this being too useful. Ravage Path provides Crawdaunt and Spinda, yet another lopsided pairing here. At least Crawdaunt does well enough against the first proper rival battle on Route 203, where he leads Lunatone against Crawdaunt, who uses two Hardens in the face of my three bubbles before going down, leaving just full picks. Now, while sure it does get a roar off after a bubble does a little less than half, Ekans is able to come in and finish it off with Bite to win the match. Easy enough. And my first official battle with our rival Joey begins. I start off with my slack off and Joey brings out his Quillfish. I immediately switch into my Ampharos to paralyze and finish it off with a Thundershock. Joey sends in his Snover. I get a little scared thinking back to our first fake fight where Snover almost killed my Ampharos, but fear not. My Ampharos has grown since our last battle, Joey. Silly boy. My Ampharos comes in with a Thunder Wave, paralyzing Snover and hits Snover with a good old Thunder Shock. Joey's Snover uses Razor Leaf and the combination of hail starts chipping away at my Ampharos, but fear not. My Ampharos was just better. Joey's Snover is dead. 
Back to encounters, Route 203 houses Hippopotas and Gorobus, a decent pairing. Twin Leaf Town by fishing with the Old Rod gives us Squirtle and Giraffe Rig, and is really starting to show just how ridiculously frequent water and normal types are. Thank goodness for our starters. Route 2019 to the south of San Gem gives us Meganium and Wingle from the Old Rod. Route 218 has Beautifly and Duskull. Then Orberg Tunnel gives us a nutty pair of Regigigas and Metatite. I feel like the game is purposely giving the more experienced player the legendaries just to fuck with us out of spite. However, that's quickly disproven by Route 207's absolute monster of a pair, Metagross for myself, and Kyogre for Ame. My first legendary, finally! I believe we have won the game. Even more so when the Orberg Mine provides us Dodrio and Vaporeon. Hey guys, did you know- I am going to kill her. Sure, that's like the fourth water type for Ame, but it's still a very solid tank that both can do damage and allow me to have a strong powerhouse early on with Dodrio, so it's definitely worth adding to the party. And with that, it's time to choose the team for Rourke. Considering this is a randomizer, I think just choosing the best variety while also leading with our strongest regardless of typing is probably for the best. So we opt for these teams shown on screen, get up to the level cap of 14, and jump right into the fight. Rourke starts out with a mill tank. Uh, this fight took no joke 23 uses of ember in a row to take down. No burns, just a Bunch of stalling with milk drink, defense curls so that I can't start resorting to bite for flinch tactics, critical hits with ember that do just over half damage and therefore are easily healed off by milk drink, all while I'm sitting here irritated that I have to deal with male mining Whitney over here. Thankfully, mill tank finally goes down and out comes Skitty. So I swap into Metagross only to take a sing, but at least he has no way to follow up as Metagross takes a tackle, waking up next turn and KOing both it and his last Pokemon in Sentret with one Metal Claw each to win. Leading off with your ace is a ballsy move, especially when it's somebody else's ace. I am able to skip the first two trainers because I'm smart and they're not. And we're off on our first gym battle. It's very odd imagining what kind of Pokemon Rourke will bring since this is a randomizer, but Rourke starts off with a Weezing. My Kyogre is a badass bitch and just obliterates it with a one water pulse. Next, Rourke brings out a ooh, so tentacly Tangella. I've always imagined what it'd be like to eat one of those, but luckily, Pokemon aren't real, so, you know, I don't really have to think about that. Tangella is a grass type, and I send it in my Spinda to Winda. My Winda hits Tangella with a tackle, and luckily, Tangella uses its growth, raising its special attack. My Spinda hits Tangella with a crit and is suddenly slept with Sleep Powder. While Spinda snoozes away, I switch into Duskull, but then Tangella instantly sleeps my Duskull as well. What the heck? <laughs> I'm mad at this point. We are going to be at a slumber party where I'm not even invited. Luckily, Duskull wakes up right away with Nightshade and hits Tangella twice. I switch back to Kyogre, although my baby is weak to grass. My legendary is just too cool. We finish it off with Tangella with a Water Pulse, and suddenly Rourke is a Water Trainer and hits me up with a Primplup. But Kyogre is just the better water Pokemon and just water pulses Primplup twice and Primplup is dead. Come back when you actually become Emperor and with that Rourke turns over his life savings and we get the coal badge. And if that fight was anything to go by it's that gym leader spirits are connected and they are trying to haunt me with Whitney flashbacks. Thank god he didn't have Clefairy or I would have lost it completely. Nothing much of note happens between the first and second gyms either, but we do end up rolling really lucky on Route 204 with the TMs that replace Bullet Seed. On my side, I ended up getting Dragon Rush, and while this is a relatively inaccurate Dragon-type Iron Tail, Metagross does learn it here, and that's fantastic coverage for a physical attacker. Ame ends up getting Thunderbolt, a perfect stab move to make Ampharos way stronger and much more usable than before with Thundershock and Tackle. Sadly though, Ame does end up losing Spinda to a Team Galactic Grunt's Sunflora. Well, rip Cronon, I guess. You weren't long for this earth. Anyway, following that up is the Valley Windworks encounter, where I end up getting a horsey and Ame runs into Skiploom. An actually decent pair that she KOs with Kyogre by not paying attention. Well, you win some, you lose some, I guess. No worries. At least the Valley Windworks itself isn't too bad, as I'm once again faced with a normal type Pokemon in Mars's lead Clefable as I go with Entei. Blasting away with Ember as she goes for Minimize. Thankfully, this doesn't do anything as three Embers KOs through that in a double slap, leading to Kingdra. Oh dear! Well, if this thing has the Sniper ability, I might just be dead assuming that thing can hit me hard enough this quickly. So I swap into Wartortle to try to absorb a Water-type attack, only to take a Smoke Screen, then out into Metagross to hopefully resist a Dragon-type move, only to see Focus Energy. Oh no! 
That is not good with Sniper. I just opt to stay in and try to KO with Dragon Rush, but I miss the first two times as Kingdra misses the crit with two water guns, only doing 10 damage each, and leaving Metagross with 37 HP. Third time's the charm as Dragon Rush nearly KOs Kingdra as she lands the third non-critical water gun, but puts me into Sniper crit range in the process. She does heal off some of that near KO with a Orin Berry though, but with that low of HP, Confusion should KO at this point, right? Well, it barely doesn't, as another water gun connects and thankfully does not crit once again, despite the chance of being boosted to 1 in 4 with focus energy, allowing for a second confusion to connect and finish the fight. Whew, that could have been a disaster. So, I forgot to heal after getting beaten up by some galactic grunts on the way to Mars, but Mama didn't raise no bitch. But I instantly regret my actions when Mars pulls out her Dialga. Why does she get the god of time? Wait, but they already have Dialga, right? But like, then why is Team Galactic here? Don't they already have control of Dialga? What? Wait, the, the, the god of time is there! What the heck? My Vaporeon is still sleeping from the last battle. And I might be in some trouble here. I try to bait out Roar of Time, and luckily my Vaporeon, who in terms of male human and female Pokemon breeding, is bulky and wakes up. I get hit with a Dragon Breath, and hit Dialga with Sand Attack twice. I switch into my own Legendary, and hit Dialga with Water Pulse. My butt clenches a little bit, as Dialga hits my Blue Whale with a Dragon Breath, which paralyzes, but my Blue Whale is just better. We recover some HP with a Berry Juice, and Dialga gets confused and hits itself to death. Mars brings in Shield on next which we immediately crush with Water Pulse. Oh, bye, doggy. Sorry, Mars. My god was just better. Thank god we had the counter to Dialga. That could have ended this run very prematurely if it wasn't for Kyogre. See, this is why I didn't ban legendaries for this run. Considering in randomizers, you never know what will pop up. And if the enemy has one, it's fair game that we can fire back with similar strength. With Mars defeated, though, we can head up into Route 205 proper for our next encounter pair in Pupitar and Raticate, which at least replaces Spindo with a more competent partner. Plus, I get an Electric-type immunity that, if kept alive until endgame, can evolve into my favorite Pokemon of all time, so I see this as an absolute win. But Route 205 give, and Route 205 taketh away as Ame ends up running into the bane of all randomizer nuzlocks. Early game Dragon Rage. By the hands of an optional trainer I accidentally ran into, I'm forced to fight a Gabite with Dragon Rage, doing 40 damage every time an attack lands. My Pokemon and I are only level 14, and while thankfully I have things that are bulky enough to survive, like Vaporeon, Lantern, Kyogre, they couldn't survive too, and she just kept hammering away at me. Thankfully, Meatball steps in to ensure the run doesn't end up dying immediately by sacrificing my Dust Skull for a safe switch into Vaporeon, using a few sand attacks to get Dragon Rage to begin missing, allowing for me to swap into Ampharos, get hit, but then swap into Lantern and finally dodge it, hitting a water gun for about 40% as she misses one, then missing a second one due to Sand Veil ability as Gabite outspeeds and sets up Sandstorm for plus one evasion boost. Thankfully, we still have enough HP to go for another water gun to bring her down to a low yellow, finally bringing Gigafrig and dodge one last Dragon Rage to KO with confusion. <sighs> God, please stop giving me your hardest battles. You're gonna give me a heart attack. Give them to Meatball instead. Why is it always me? Well, at least the turn of forest ends up going well. And once Cheryl is escorted out, we can get our encounter without the threat of her KOing them, getting Wigglytuff and Sableye. A nice bulky pair, especially one of them with no weaknesses here in Gen 4. It was just pretty much all I can ask for at this point. And with that, we're out and into Eterna City. And while we do have access to a few new encounters on Route 211 and in Mount Coronet, we should have more than enough firepower to take out Gardenia regardless of what she has at this point. I mean, I'm not even worried about Gardenia. The real threats are these damn gym trainers who seem more capable of trying to handle us. I mean, come on, Rayquaza and Heatran? I mean, calm down, guys. Well, after fighting a few of those insane gym trainers, it's finally for our epic gym battle. Gardenia leads us off with a... Is that a Zigzagoon? Huh? Well, I guess we just give the trainers the legendaries and keep the normie Pokemon to the bass battle. My Raticate uses Hyper Fang and almost one-shots the Zigzagoon, who uses a Headbutt for a measly 12 damage. I think the Zigzagoon needs to go back to training school. We finish it off real quick with another two Hyper Fangs, while Gardenia is too busy force feeding her Pokemon some potions. Gardenia next brings out Seviper, who is, I guess, kind of on theme? I mean, I guess some flowers are 
poisonous, right? Me and my trusty right hit the snake with a sucker punch and we slowly get hit by his poison tail. With a hyper fang and a quick attack from my rat, which should have killed, but Gardenia likes to force feed her Pokemon potions. We switch into Ampharos. We one shot Saviper with a Thunderbolt and Gardenia brings it out her final Pokemon, a fucking butterfly. I mean, I mean like, I mean, it's a butterfly. <laughs> We just shoot another thunderbolt from Ampharos and knock Gardenia on her butt. She gives us her lunch money and we gain the forest badge from Gardenia. Well, at least my experience with Gardenia is much less threatening as she leads off with... Latios. Despite this, it really isn't that much of a threat as Entei two shots it with bite through a safeguard, taking no damage in the process. Second out is Luminion, which is technically a threat to Entei, but not so much as War Turtle as I swap into a Rain Dance, taking a gust and starting to wail in on her with bite. I do have War Turtle also holding the Quick Claw here in hopes to proc and get a flinch here, but once she uses a Tract and a Super Potion back to back, I'm out and into Dodrio to start doing some better damage with Quick Attack. Another Rain Dance is set up as well as a Tract, but I try continuing with the Quick Attack Onslaught, only to take a Dragon Breath for around a third. No need to risk a critical hit here as I swap back into War Turtle, not taking one, not two, but three gusts before finally breaking through attraction and KOing with Bite. All that remains is Ludicolo, a fitting ace for the Grass Gym Leader, so I swap into Metagross expecting a Grass move into War Turtle, and sure enough it's Mega Drain. Doing minimal damage as Dragon Rush hits on the first go for over half, though she is packing a Citrus Berry to ensure that the second next turn doesn't KO. Thankfully, we do end up landing that second one in a row though, putting Ludicolo in the low red as Tri-Attack barely does anything, letting Confusion KO the Ludicolo and grant me the Forest Badge. Thank you, Randomizer, for still putting me in the position to make the joke about touching grass and eating ass. I was worried you were going to put a damper on those plans. Following that, of course, is the Galactic Headquarters, and once again, nothing's dead, so we can just wait on those encounters, getting to Jupiter straight away. Jupiter's hot. There, I said it. I'm, I mean, I'm putting it out here. And I almost feel bad for battling her. So... But Jupiter shows us her fossil fish, Relicanth, while I throw my rat at her. My Raticate bites her fish, but it does not as much damage as I wanted. Relicanth hits us with a rock tomb. Jupiter scolds me with some choice words, calling me an insolent child. Yes, mommy. <laughs> I get tired of my rat's slow progress and send in Ampharos instead. One hit KOing that fish. Jupiter next sends Nidoran, who is basically a rat. Maybe she's copied my style. But to no avail. I just hit that rat with a thunderbolt and the rat dies. Sorry, Jupiter mommy. There can only be one rat. Jupiter hands over some cash for hitting her and compliments me with a... Well, aren't you tough? And we're on our merry way. Now that I've had something primal within me awaken that I dare not question, I too am entering Jupiter with her leading Shiftry and myself, Entei. Maybe saying entering Jupiter wasn't a good idea. Anyway, Ember is more than enough to handle this in one shot, KOing and leaving just wall rain. Now, this is a little bit of a threat against Entei, so I opt instead to swap into War Turtle to take the water gun, then just start throwing out bites as she goes for body slam over and over and over again. Three is all I can take before getting into crit range though, swapping then into Wigglytuff to take even more of them efficiently, while also dealing out super effective rock smash. Though with the second body slam getting paralysis off, it's not the most helpful thing in the world. Thankfully though, due to defense drops and no turns of paralysis holding Wigglytuff down, the third and final rock smash gets the KO and ends the fight. Once again, no deaths in a major boss fight. Can't ask for anything more. Aside from more encounters, that is, there's three we can go grab straight away, with the first being right here in Eternus City from Cynthia's Eggs. Boy, I'm just having a field day with unintentionally suggestive jokes here, am I? I end up hatching Ariados, completely useless by the way, and Ame gets Blissey. While I'd like to complain about yet another lopsided pairing, we do have the two utterly bonkers Entei Ampharos and Metagross Kyogre pairs, so I don't really have much of a leg to stand on here. Though they are pushing it when I get Latias and Ame gets a female Burmy. I mean, I guess Wormadam is fine at best. But still, I've got three legendaries and it's starting to get a bit ridiculous. Funnily enough, my first encounter in Mount Coronet was a Wormadam. Would have been nice to get that and use Species Claws to have something better attached to Latias. Well, I can't deny that Primplup and Mankey isn't at least a solid pair, especially when both of them evolve, or it would have been if Ame didn't continue to KO her encounters. 
Two strikes, one more, and you're out of here. Route 206 gives us the pairing of Houndoom and Roselia, which has to be one of our most diverse and good pairs so far. Dual types with nothing overlapping while also filling holes in our teams, though more so with Ame since I already have Entei. But with the Dark type, it's still useful enough on its own. Carrying on, there's no new encounters until Route 208. Wait, now hold on. We're not overlooking this. My curse of having to fight legendary after legendary continues, with a hiker having a Reggie Gigas on Route 207, and this black belt having Cresselia in 208. Dude, that's a psychic type. Isn't that like your sworn enemy as a black belt fighting guy? Anyway, once again, I implore you to please stop giving me your hardest battles. Please and thank you. And please stop running away or knocking out our encounters. Ame runs away from her Route 208 encounter in Clefable, so I miss out on Amistar. Rough, but still workable considering she's already got enough normal types in the tank. It would have been nice to get that Yuxi though, especially for Ladios! Why won't they? <laughs> Anywho, we make it into Heart Home City, somehow unscathed by the literal forces of gods, with Bebe having given a gift Pokemon for each of us. I get my third starter Pokemon of the run in Bulbasaur. Meanwhile, Ame ends up rolling Glammeow, again with the normal types. I am fully convinced this game is conspiring against us. But seeing as this is Platinum and not Diamond and Pearl, we're free to go ahead and take on Fantina after getting her back to the gym from the contest hall. Once again, seeing a Clefable lead here like we did with Mars, so that's easy enough to just keep Entei out against and wail on with Ember. Taking a 4-hit double slap as well as a metronomed spike cannon before seeing a super potion, continuing to deal good damage with Ember thanks to our held life orb. Thank you, randomized items, for giving me something rather dumb and broken, by the way. However, that damage is racking up, so I swap into Dodrio as Clefable goes for Sing, managing to hit with the inaccurate move, then go for metronome in order to roll into Roost to fully heal. Not pleasant to say the least, especially when paired with Minimize, but we finally wake up and land a quick attack that both triggers Cute Charm and and flinches with a held King's Rock. So I go for a second, connecting, then seeing Clefable roll into Horn Attack with Metronome, which is unfortunate because it's Stab, but it's fine. I just gotta land this range with the third quick attack, and I do not land the range. And of course she rolls into thunder! I swear to God I will fight you when I arrive in heaven for what you've done to me! Thankfully it's easy enough for me to revenge KO it by bringing in Entei, using Ember, then seeing Mawile second. Well shoot, Life Orb Ember should still be safe here, and it is, one-shotting and leaving just Yon Mega. Now as much as I'd love to just sit in and do the same thing, there's a 0% chance Yon Mega doesn't outspeed. So I swap into Metagross as she goes for Sonic Boom, seeing the speed boost in between turns. However, from here, I don't feel like doing anything aside from clicking Dragon Rush, and while Detect blocks the first one, somehow we're able to hit the 75% accurate move through a double team next turn for less than half damage. Wow, that's disastrous. I guess I can just start going for Confusion from this position then, doing around a quarter with it before seeing another double team and Sonic Boom. Honestly, I can't even keep up at this point. All I know is that Metagross is at 3 HP thanks to 4 Sonic Booms, Super Potions have been flying out of Fantina's bag and into Yanmega's throat, and it's barely under half by the time I'm forced to swap. I genuinely don't think she's got a better move than Sonic Boom though, and Wigglytuff can survive 5 of them. Though, with her best move being cut, this might be a problem. Two Sonic Booms land before Cut lands once, doing half of her remaining HP, and despite a few double teams being up, Cut number two lands after the third Sonic Boom, KOing and winning me the Relic Badge. Well, we're starting off while forgetting to level up my Pokemon again from the last trainer fights, but never fear, I am a genius after all. Fantina brings out Mawile while I toss my rat, but luckily my rat is also a genius just like me, and a clean brick break easily two shots to this Mawile. Fantina next brings out Bibarel. We love our river beaver. I take out the rat and bring in Ampharos. We get hit by Hyper Fang twice, but shoot down the beaver with a thunderbolt. Fantina who maybe might be in cahoots with Rourke, brings out Impelion. I really want to hit this Impelion with a Thunderbolt, but Ampharos is looking kind of weak right now, and I'm a little scared I might kill our Ampharos and Entei combo, so I switch into my will. Kyogre hits Impelion with a Water Pulse. Impelion confuses us with Swagger and hurts themselves. No, I can't lose my whale. I switch to my rat and sacrifice its life to the mercy of the penguin. Rest in peace, rat. I will always remember you. <laughs> I switch into Kyogre and Water Pulse Empeleon, and it dies. 
We lose some friends along the way, but I always remember my friendship with the rat fondly. We receive the relic badge from Fantina and celebrate our victory with some sadness. Well, I suppose this was a fair trade. You lost me the pre-evolution of my favorite Pokemon, and I lost you the excuse to use the Vaporeon copy pasta. But I think I'm just gonna put a $10 bet down real quick on you finding a Gardevoir or Lopunny pretty quickly, just so that the game can continue to spite me specifically. Upon replacing our fallen pairs in the PC, straight after is our third fight with our rival, and as per usual, Ame receives the hardest battles known to humankind as she has to deal with Garchomp, and I have to deal with Stunky. I throw in my whale and he throws in his... Wait, what? Is that a Garchomp? This game is trolling me! I water pulse the Garchomp, and it quickly becomes confused and hits themselves, and finish off the Garchomp with another water pulse. I'm so glad I do not have to relieve the Dragon Rage incident. <laughs> Snover comes in next, and I throw an Ancient Power to Snover, killing it instantly. And then Joey brings in Celio? I quickly change to Roselia and throw Magical Leaf in a Giga Drain. Then surprise, surprise, Joey brings out... A milk tank. I've always wondered, since all milk tanks are female and Taros is males only, can they crossbreed and bring like a like a Wagyu premium cow or something? I switch to Sableye and forget to use Fake Out. And Milk Tank hits me with Rollout, and I realize that since Milk Tank is locked into Rollout, I safely switch back to Kyogre, hit it with the Water Pulse, and woohoo! Having a legendary on the team truly is the best. I agree, as Latias manages to solo Stunky with two Dragon Breaths, Spinda with two of them following Paralysis and a dodged Hypnosis, Full Fulpix with two of them despite a Confuse Ray attempting and failing to make Latias hit itself, and finally, Heracross who we managed to hit with Dragon Breath for half despite still being confused, taking an Aerial Ace and snapping out before landing the second and final Dragon Breath to KO and win. Late work ladies and gents, now let's see if we have any more interesting encounters up ahead. Route 209 ends up housing Relicanth for me and Yanma for Ame, so that's actually a decent pairing. At least it's me ending up with the water type this go around. Yanmega is also a pretty decent Pokemon for Gen 4 and can certainly help fill in holes in the team later on if needed. The Lost Tower gives us Caterpie and Carnivine, which on paper sounds bad, but in reality isn't the worst, since Butterfree is a lot better than most people give it credit for, considering it has both compound eyes as well as sleep powder. Next up, Salacion Ruins gives us... Yuxi and Corsola. Why am I not surprised the game gives you Yuxi? You have Entei, Bladeas, Yuxi, Regigigas. Like, what's up with that? All I have is a Kyogre. I'm just asking for a little fairness game. I agree, it would be nice if you were allowed to have the steamrollers, and if I had to think for once in these battles, but alas, we will simply get legendaries in later encounters. Route 210 houses Trico and Bonsly, not the most useful, well they're not useful at all if you keep killing the encounters, Ame! I'm sorry, I was just clicking buttons, it wasn't on purpose. If this happens again, I'm gonna have to get a replacement co-host. I'm thinking a piece of toast will suffice at this point. Well, it at least better be buttered toast if you're going that far. Nah, it's gonna have cream cheese on it just to spite you. Anyway, Route 215 has Muck and Shuckle, which makes for a funny name of Muck and Shuck connection, but Ame kills Shuckle. That's wait, it, no, time wait, for the cream no, cheese wait, toast. You You've hurt me for the last time. Toast. I'm kidding, but it would be funny. Just ahead is Veilstone City and- Ah! Ephros, no! I'm going to attack you. How do you misclick? Ugh. And I thought we were about ready to go into that fourth gym, completely prepared. I mean, I still have two legendaries, a pseudo and a starter, along with Houndoom and Wigglytuff. I'm not mad at all. It's more Ame's team I'm worried about when she's carrying around a squad of dinky little guys and gals along with a massive Kyogre. You should be. When I'm going in without being fully healed and without leveling all my Pokemon to the cap. Actually, I'm lying. Flareon goes down to a Water Pulse, Delibird to Ancient Power, Full Picks to Water Pulse all in one shot, each to give me the win and the Cobble Badge. About time I'm given the easy battles. Mine goes well enough as Maylene leads Mantike against my Metagross, a very simple KO with Dragon Rush leading to Piloswine. Now despite it being ground type, Metal Claw is super effective due to it also being part ice, doing over half as Mud Bomb does slightly less than half. So Metagross picks up that KO with Metal Claw next turn, leaving just Luxray. Now I'm not willing to stay in against that on just half HP, so I swap into Latias only to take a Swagger. and eh, not really that great, so I swap again into Regigigas to take a light bite, seeing 
using the Quick Claw proc to fire off Confuse Ray next turn, leading to Luxray hitting itself. Nice, and heck, two turns of Quick Claw procs in a row really helps to inhibit slow start as Dizzy Punch lands, but Luxray gets off Swagger in retaliation. Not a problem though, since I can simply swap back into Latias, delivering two Dragon Breaths through a bite to win the fight with no losses. Four down, four in the lead to go? Seems like this run is promising. Now with Maylene out of the way, there's a Gift Porygon normally here in Veilstone that we can grab, with mine turning into Shield On. Not bad, but I swear I made the once in a lifetime prediction here. Uh, now I want to know right. what your yours is. The one directly. Watch it be like a freaking Dialga or something. <gasps> what it's is a it? Dialga! <laughs> I literally said, watch it be a Dialga, and it's a fucking Dialga! <laughs> what can I say? I'm just too good. See, you'll get legendaries, but only when I tell the game to do so. Well, tell the game to give me more forehead, but I am really happy to have Dialga. Steel Dragon is such defensive typing, despite Dialga being an offensive machine. Just having access to special attacks like Flash Cannon, Dragon Pulse, should make the rest of this run a breeze. Hopefully, but we're not quite done with encounters since we still have a few things to the south of Veilstone. First up, Route 214 gives us Licky Licky and Electrode. An odd but interesting pair. The Ruin Maniac's Cave gives me yet another stupid legendary in Regice, and despite having just gotten a Master Ball randomly in Veilstone, it completely blanks on me that this thing can use explosion, and sure enough, we lose the encounter because of it. I'm really mad at myself for that too, since Ame's first encounter in here was a Torterra, and that pairing would have gone super hard at this point in the game. Though, admittedly, I'm not sure if I needed three legendaries, but I certainly would have taken them nonetheless. Third up in this string is the Valor Lakefront, housing Victory Bell and... Well, it would have been Regigigas if it weren't for Dupes Claws, but instead Bronzong. Eh, I mean, if Dialga goes down, sure. Though, depending on the ability, it might be either a very useful ground immune pivot or a fire resistance. Fourth is Route 213, housing Rhyperior and Barboach. Once again, another extremely weird pairing along with another water type for Ame, but I've never had the opportunity to use a Rhyperior before, so I'm all for it. But with that, I think we're more than ready to head to our next rival battle in Pastoria City. Starting with mine, the rival is leading Hoot Hoot as I go with Metagross, landing Metal Claw for the one-shot KO as I do the same thing to Nine Tails next turn with Earthquake, following a Light Ember for about a third. Third out is Cast Form, another one-shot KO with Metal Claw, albeit with a critical hit. And finally, Doug Zeef's favorite Pokemon, Sfeel who goes down to Metal Claw and Bullet Punch after setting up Hail on its only turn to attack. Not bad. Mine starts off pretty well. Joey starts with Happiny. My Diago kills it with Dragon Claw. Snubble is next. I'm wondering where the Garchomp is. I'm a little worried, honestly, but Diago is easily cutting through Joey's team. Obama Snow comes out, and I hit the Yeti twice with Ancient Power. Joey decides to not bring out Garchomp, so I guess I worried for no reason, and throws in Porygon Z instead. I easily one-shot with Draco Meteor. And hilariously, that battle is even harder than what Crash Your Wake gives me. Cause Crash Your Wake just decides to give me the, the little nursery team, the three babies. Literally, the puzzle to get to Wake was harder than Wake's battle. Wake starts off with Wooper, the cute little fella, but my Rosalia mega drains it, and next is a Magikarp? I mean, I assumed at level 34 it would already be evolved into Gyarados, but I guess the RNG for Wake is just uh, not great. So we say goodbye to this Magikarp while they sadly splash away. Just as a PSA, I'd like to bring awareness for the plight of Magikarps everywhere that are forced to use Splash for all eternity. They are not useless. Please remember to take care of your Magikarps. Give them some tender, loving care. Carp, carp. Well, mine goes pretty smoothly as well, with Wake leading Sneasel, so I go for Metagross, obliterating it in one bullet punch as Swampert enters second. Well, no time like the present to do a starter showdown as I swap into the newly evolved Blastoise taking a very light mud shot and firing back with a critical water pulse for half damage next turn. Unfortunately though, Mud Bomb ends up doing too much as Aqua Tail brings Swampert into the red, so I take the healing turn for Swampert to swap into Regigigas, then use Confuse Ray next turn as Swampert goes for takedown. It lands again next turn as I go for Fly, don't ask why this is here, I'm guessing the randomizer made it so that Regigigas can learn Fly, hitting next turn for minimal damage, then going for Dizzy Punch twice and Drain Punch once to finally KO, alleviating Slow Start and keeping half HP as Wake brings in his last Pokemon, Finneon. I mean, two flies does the trick, nothing more needed to be said about that. 
5 badges and we still have an insane number of legendaries as part of our squad, though there's plenty of encounters to weed through to maximize our power going into the late game. The only major battles between now and Byron are against Cyrus and the rival, but there are a good few number of encounters. Pastoria City houses Aerodactyl and Hypno, another interesting pair, as well as Route 212 having Graveler and Mudkip. Oh, finally, Ame gets a hold of a starter. Yeah, but it's another water type. I'm just cursed to never have a fire type Pokemon at this point. I've given up. It's not the worst thing in the world. I'd rather have more water and grass types than fire, especially with Dialga on the team. Those are the only two new encounters before Cyrus and Celestic Town, though. Our discount Grimjow leads in with Rhydon, and Kyogre one-shots it with Water Pulse. Next up is Heracross, and it's a fighting type, so it's neutral against Kyogre. But Kyogre doesn't care, and two shots Heracross. Cyrus's... Cyrus's? How do you... Do you say Cyrus's? If there's multiple Cyrus, is there Cyri? He brings out his ace, Dusk Noir, and I'm a little scared that he has Thunder Punch, but I risk it for the biscuit. Throwing Ice Beam and two more Water Pulses, and that mummy is dead. My battle leads Kecleon as I go with Blastoise. Alternating back and forth between either a water type move in Water Pulse or Aqua Tail, back to Bite to keep color change from inhibiting my damage, all while taking around half damage from Kecleon before KOing and leading to Carnivine. Not staying in on that, so I swap into Houndoom, resisting a feint attack and firing off with a critical ember for the one-shot, leaving just... Uh, Igly buff. What is with these darn train races? They are so bad. A few embers burns the baby into nice golden brown crisp, winning me the fight in short order. But with them gone, it's straight into Cantilave City for our next rival fight, with Barry leading Weepin' Bell as I go for Metagross. KOing straight away with a super effective Psychic as Nine Tails comes out second, falling to Earthquake following a safeguard. Pinko is third, and Dragon Rush Psychic combo does more than enough to KO, with it only using a light payback for 13 whole points of damage before going down. Electrode is fourth, being a moron and setting up light screen when he already has seen Earthquake earlier in the fight, though I suppose if it's for his fifth Pokemon to survive Psychic, it's okay? Oh no, it's because he's a moron, as his last Pokemon is Furret, falling to an Earthquake Bullet Punch combo after using Follow Me in a single battle. What a terrible AI. Oh, it's bridge time. Dun dun dun. And out pops a Surskit. A very frightening Pokemon, by the way. And I hit it with my newly acquired Surf. And goodbye, Waterbug. Next up is our friendly neighborhood, Obama Snow. And I'm thinking that my Kyogre is just strong enough to live through anything Obama Snow throws at me. So I just hit it with a few ice beams and suddenly out of nowhere, boom, wood hammer. It almost one-shots my Kyogre, giving me a heart attack. I immediately switch into Dialga against Alakazam, and these spooms can't touch me. Dragon Claw easily le rips through Alakazam. And next up, it's Sandshrew, taking it down with a few Dragon Claws. And Joey brings out his last Pokemon. It's a... Gulpin? Gulpin these nuts! My Dialga throws a meteor from the sky and just decimates this poor green goblin. Goblin these nuts. I'm sorry. Sorry, Meeple. Uh, you're fine. I was thinking of going to Iron Island first before Byron, but considering this team was able to rip through the likes of Darkrai and Rayquaza in here without losing anybody, I think we're perfectly fine with the team as is without needing any sort of new encounters. Byron leads with Staravia, barely not being one-shot by Metagross's Psychic, but accidentally KOing itself with Takedown Recoil, not doing much damage at all to Metagross as Mightyena enters second. Well, Clearbody negates Intimidate, and Steel still resists Dark in Gen 4, so I may as well stay in and hit Earthquake, near KOing as he goes for Swagger on the follow-up. Well, I don't want to risk anything, so I swap into Regigigas. Seeing a full restore on this turn as expected, then start going for Super Effective Drain Punch. I know Regigigas isn't strong enough with Slow Start for Swagger to be a problem, and Drain Punch will just heal back any damage taken by self-inflicted damage, which ends up being the case, but of course, that's not much of a help considering I didn't heal the power points for Drain Punch before the fight, draining my remainder all while only hitting it once. But it doesn't matter as a second Swagger connects, but Dizzy Punch gets the KO on both Mightyena and his ace, Magikarp, winning the fight. Of all Pokemon to randomize into, the ace ends up being Magikarp? Hey, don't dog on Magikarp, we taste great. And speaking of tasting great, victory is at hand against Byron as he leads a Trico. Kyogre promptly hips it with his Ice Beam and bye bye Trico. Next up is Relicanth, who's neutral to water, so I hit it with Surf two times and the fossil goes down. The last Pokemon Byron has is Duskull. Damn, not even a Dusclops. Or maybe Byron doesn't have any friends to trade with? Feels bad, man. 
Kyogre one-shots it with Surf. Byron really getting L plus ratio, plus doesn't have friends, plus didn't ask, plus cope, plus skill issue, plus cry about it. And that's six down. Honestly, I'm kind of shocked that we're kind of nailing this on our first attempt, but it seems to be going off pretty well. Back to encounters we go as Iron Island houses the pairing of Starmie and Weedle. Seriously, how did we end up getting the first form of both Kanto Forest Bugs? I mean, sure, it's fine, but again, I don't want to saddle Ame with bad Pokemon, but if it comes down to it, I'm sure we can make Beedrill work. That's it for now, though, since we need to go take on Saturn and Mars at Lake Valor and Verity, respectively, with the former leading Ming Neck Trick as I go with Latias. Taking two bites for super effective damage and half overall is two Mist Balls KOs, leading to Viper, who goes down to just one of them. Last out is Corefish, who I didn't expect to survive a dragon, Dragon Breath, but barely does and manages to nail a nasty Night Slash, bringing Latias to just 16 HP as I contemplate next turn. Despite having paralysis from the Dragon Breath, it could have Aqua Jet and could just straight up KO Latias despite the resistance, so I swap into Blastoise, taking a Night Slash, and delivering a bite to KO and win without risking a loss. Would have used Metagross, but it's getting a little too close to the level cap. Next up, Mars leads with Seedra, going down to two Dragon Breaths following a Light Twister, leading to Chikorita, who falls to Silverwind, albeit with no Omni boost. Last out is Slacking, and while this might seem threatening after a Swagger lands following a Dragon Breath, a Silver Wind that gets the boost on the Loafing turn plus a second Dragon Breath manages to get the KO on Slacking without it doing any damage to Latias once, winning me the fight for free. Now for me, Saturn throws in Mr. Mime, and I throw in my Dialga, who hits them with a critical hit. Next is Monferno, and I switch to Kyogre, hitting the monkey with a surf. Then comes Licky Licky, our resident tongue enthusiast, and Kyogre freezes that tongue with an ice beam and finishing it off with a surf. Saturn, GG, easy, uninstall, noob. But once again to Lake Verity, my Gigafrig gets sniped by a slacking with faint attack, taking it out and taking Meatball's Blastoise along with it. Man, I like that pairing, even if Gigafrig isn't really the greatest Pokemon in the world. You will be missed, my beautiful giraffe friend. I will have my revenge on the Mars as she brings out a Meowth, who uses nasty plot. But Diago blasts Meowth with a Dragon Claw. Next up is Grottle, who does a plant thing while I claw it up with some Dragon Claws. And Mars brings out a Badoo. Damn, who, why are they taking these nursery little baby Pokemon from? <laughs> now that the steam has all blown off, we're off to do the next gem leader. Wait, Meatball, what was her name again? Oh, it's Candace. Candace dick fit in your mouth? I should have replaced you with the toast when I had the chance. Anyway, once we've replaced Giraffe Rig and Blastoise with Vigoroff and Slowbro, which hilariously just moved the Psychic type over to me while retaining the other two typings, it's encounter time again as we accidentally KO our Route 216 encounters. Then, after clearing out Candace's gym trainers, we finally find him. I get Linoon, and Ame finds God itself, Arceus. As the resident VTuber, it only makes sense Arceus would choose me, as now I truly have God in anime on my side. Why is it that with every joke she speaks, it makes me want to drink to alleviate the nonsense? I mean, you know what, maybe this vodka will make it funnier. I have no clue, but I think 200 milliliters should do the trick. Ah, oh, God, that burns with that much going down at once. It certainly makes things funnier. Though what's not funny is Ame once again KOing an encounter in the Acuta D lakefront. Candace is just ahead, leading Spinda, nearly going down to Earthquake as Hypnosis misses, leading to a Hyper Potion as Metagross lands Bullet Punch for half, doing it again next turn to KO. Second up is Lickitung, and despite using Disable to make Earthquake unusable for a few turns, it too goes down in one Earthquake and two Bullet Punches without doing any damage to Metagross, leading to Onyx. Now its special defense is paper thin, so I figure Psychic makes the most sense here doing enough damage to pull her down into the red as she goes for Rock Polish, then another Hyper Potion next turn as Psychic once again brings her into the red, but with Bullet Punch's priority, it's a free KO with no damage as she brings in her final Pokemon, Celebi. Finally, a worthy ace for a gym leader. Magical Leaf seems to be her best attack though, so I just wail on her with a myriad of Dragon Rush and Bullet Punch, bringing her down to half with one each before the Citrus Berry triggers, then using one more Dragon Rush and two more Bullet Punches to get the KO, all before Celebi can even do enough damage to get Metagross to half, winning me the Ice Skull Badge. I, I just want to say, it's almost embarrassing to admit 
how long it took me to figure out the snowball puzzle to get to Candace. I think if I played this as a child, I might have rage quit already. But anyway, we're here after 20 minutes. <laughs> Candace starts off with Walrin. I'm a little scared of the Walrus, but what if I just Calm Mind? It increases my special attack and defense and maybe I can just sweep? I use Calm Mind three times and then hit Walrin with Ancient Power. It's a one hit KO. Next out comes Oddish. Ice Beam goes bam bam. Mr. Mime also dies to a single surf, then a metapod? We ice beam that cocoon and say bye bye to Candace and her hellish puzzle to of a gym. There's only one more to go, but that story stuff certainly throws a damper on getting there quickly. Now before we can get to Volkner, there's just a few major fights to get through, those being Cyrus and Saturn in the Veilstone Galactic Headquarters, the Mars and Jupiter double battle on Spear Pillar, and finally the third and final Cyrus fight in the Distortion World. So let's test our metal against them and see if we're just about ready to take on the Pokemon League. Cyrus leads off with Entei in our first battle as I go with Latias, using Mist Ball for just under half as he goes for Swagger, confusing Latias and forcing me to swap into Slowbro to shake it off, taking minor damage next turn as Surf KOs leading to Monferno. Thankfully, we click Surf as he goes for Torment, and while this would normally negate me from being able to use the same attack twice in a row, Surf was already selected here and therefore gets the one-shot, leaving just Iglybuff. At this point, I just alternate Luster Purge, yes, that was a TM move and perfect stab attack for Slowbro, as well as Surf, KOing with the Surf following a full restore to win the fight quickly. With Saturn straight after, this fight goes pretty easily as well, as Love Disc goes down to one Earthquake from Metagross, Krikatoon to two Psychics, and Cray Dilly to three Bullet Punches, all while Metagross takes less than half from all attacks combined, so no need to worry about that one. My Cyrus and Saturn fights aren't too bad either, as our blue-haired king starts off with Arcanine, and I use God. I order God to use Earth Power, killing Arcanine easily. Just kidding. Cyrus fully heals his Arcanine and I switch into the real carry, Kyogre. Good thing I did switch though, because Arcanine has extreme speed and could have easily killed Arceus. We vaporize the dog with Surf, and Spinda is next, and they are a gun. Cyrus, last Pokemon, is drowsy, and he also dead. Getting our Master Ball. Our next fight is with Saturn. Saturn throws in a Vaporeon. God uses Hyper Voice and easily kills Vaporeon. Next up is Dugong. I guess Saturn is just going with the water theme. With a few Hyper Voice and extreme speed, that dugong is gong gong gong. Next up is Kakuna, and God hits it with some punishment, and that Kakuna dies. Woo! Saturn doesn't give me a Master Ball though. Boo, Saturn, boo. On to Spear Pillar we go, and for the sake of brevity, since describing two six on six randomized double battles would probably take about 15 minutes, I'll just say that mine was soloed with Metagross due to Mars and Jupiter getting terribly weak Pokemon rolled for both of their teams. And mine was a little bit more balanced. Joey and Jupiter both having Per Ugly on their team, and Mars starting off with Suicune, the Per Ugly mirror match though. But it was still a breeze for my Dialga and Arceus. Legendaries for the win! Well then, what about those Cyrus battles? Starting with mine, Cyrus leads Infernape as I go with Metagross, immediately swapping out into Latias expecting a Fire-type move, but instead getting close combat, but then taking a punishment as Mist Ball gets the KO, leading to... A Garatina? Oh well, shit, I guess Cyrus already captured it. I swap into Regigigas expecting Shadow Force as this plus Fly should be enough to get a bunch of those turns of slow start out of the way without much of a risk. And sure enough, that's the case as Confuse Ray lands next turn, but doesn't make Garatina hit itself as it goes for Dragon Claw for a little under a quarter as I go for Fly. Not the worst thing in the world though, as it can continue to go for Fly, getting out a slow start and eventually hitting three of them for around half damage before getting hit into crit range with Dragon Claw. Not as much as I was hoping, but honestly I should have been doing this other strategy from the beginning. Swapping back and forth between Metagross to absorb Dragon Claw, outspeeding with Psychic, then forcing Garatina into Shadow Force so that I can swap back into Regigigas to take it for no damage due to the Ghost immunity. This eventually takes out Garatina through a full restore, though I do start using Earthquake here in order to keep my power points on both moves at least somewhat high for the rest of the battle due to that pressure ability. Third out is Nuzleaf, a pretty pathetic Pokemon that's one shot by Hammer Arm from Metagross, leading to Gloom who's outsped and destroyed by Psychic. Last out is Shellgon, so I swap into Slowbro, hitting two Luster Purges following a Protect to KO and win the fight. I guess he ran out of gas early. Really only two difficult Pokemon on that team. My battle starts off with Cyrus bringing out a Ditto, and I immediately butt clench. Since I start out with my Dialga, I immediately switch into my Wormadam. I do not want to face another Dialga. We switch back into Dialga as Ditto takes the form of my Wormadam and hit that worm with Ancient Power. Aerodactyl is next, who is easily sweeped by Ancient Power as well. Next up, 
Cyrus brings out Politoed. Diago uses Dragon Claw and almost kills the Toad, but Politoed makes Diago confused. Cyrus uses a full restore and I switch into Kyogre, trying to hit Politoed with Surf, but it does nothing. Politoed has Water Absorb. I totally forgot about that thing. I swap into Diago who is paralyzed and confused, who hits the Toad with Hyper Voice, but then hits themselves because of confusion. No! But then, I do the unthinkable. I used Paralyze Heal, which apparently kills Arceus. But hear me out! I didn't know that using items during a battle was a no-no. So, um, unfortunately, God is dead. I'm, I'm really sorry. I have to apologize. I switch into Metacham and use Fly. And we one-shot the Sceptile and then two-shot the Politoed. And Cyrus's last Pokemon is Sharpedo. We KO with a high jump kick and defeat Cyrus for the third time. But my, my Arceus though... I cannot believe you didn't know there was a no items in battle rule this deep into the run. How did you manage to kill God with a Paralyze heal? A Paralyze... Heal. Either way, we step forward into the Distortion World encounter and find that Garatina somehow didn't get randomized. Oh, well, I guess no encounter for this area then. At least right outside in the send-off spring, I roll him a chop and Ame gets a Celebi, a decent replacement for Arceus, but nothing close. I'm very sad that we lost it to an item usage. I don't think I'm gonna get over that one. It's just not happening. There's not much else left to talk about though, aside from the encounter cleanup and the final gym battle though. So let's get in there. Route 222 is up next and houses Nidoran Male and Typhlosion for us. A pretty sick pair that all things considered, since I do have a Moonstone laying around, should be pretty easy to evolve. Sunny Shore City gives us Sand Slash and Umbreon. And finally for now, Route 223 gives us Spoink and Wismer, a pretty meh pair to end it all. All good though, as Volkner's Jim provides no challenge, aside from the leader himself. So we swap around our teams to get them as balanced as possible in preparation for him. Volkner leads off with Ursaring as I go with Metagross, KOing after missing with Hammer Arm with the second, only taking a light feint attack in the process. Second up, Groudon. So I'm getting the hell out of dodge, swapping for Latias to either resist a fire move or be immune to a ground move, and I got the former with Fire Blast, doing only around 15% even with the sun up. That makes my life easy as Miss Ball does half as it goes for bulk up, but of course the second one misses the range as Slash does half of Latias's remaining HP, leading to a full restore and Miss Ball once again doing less than half. But with Slash having Latias in KO range, I swap out for Slowbro, taking both it and Earthquake to survive on only 5 HP before firing off a Sun Depleted Surf to nearly KO, but not quite doing the job as I swap into Regigigas, hoping to survive at least something. It goes for Earthquake, doing over half, so I take the risk and swap back into Latias, seeing Earthquake and taking advantage of the immunity to get the KO with Dragon Breath. Third out is Deli Bird and I'm given a reprieve, swapping out into Metagross to take present before KOing with Bullet Punch, leaving only Psyduck, going down to an Earthquake straight after to win me the Beacon Badge. It's quite funny seeing these boss fights throw out their strongest Pokemon first or second, making me weary for the rest of the battle, only to throw out little dinky weakest Pokemon possible for the rest of it just to keep me on edge. My fight with the fourth Hokage Volkner is easy peasy. Makes me think that maybe I should get into that ninja fighting business. Volkner starts off by leading with his Scyther. I Ice Beam him with my Kyogre, then it's followed by his Pinsir. I use Ancient Power on him and then hit it with Surf. Next is Krabby, another Surf one hit target, and Volkner's final Pokemon is Deoxys. Which made me a little bit scared, since the last three Pokemon were a little too easy, but Deoxys also dies to one Surf. I guess Kyogre is just too good. Defeating Minato Uzumaki makes me the uh, leader of the Hidden Leaf Village or something? I'm a ninja, Dattibayo. And with that, one Victory Road later, as well as some new encounters, those being Torterra and Kecleon in Victory Road, as well as Jinx and Heatran in the water before the Pokemon League. And with our pairs of Latias and Wormadam, Regigigas and Metacham, Metagross and Kyogre, Rhyperior and Whizcash, Bastiodon and Dialga, and finally Nidoking and Typhlosion, we're ready for the league. I was really hoping we'd be able to bring in Roserade and Houndoom here, but we were too lazy to find a shiny stone after the main game didn't give us anything. So we're just going in with these. I'm fine with this though. I've got two legendaries and a pseudo legendary. Ame has two legendaries. We should have more than enough firepower to take out five major battles without suffering defeat. However, we do have one more fight against the rival to take on beforehand. For me, this goes swimmingly at level 58, with a good few levels of advantage as Metagross uses Psychic Decay as lead Infernape, Earthquake on Ninetales, Earthquake on Totodile, Earthquake and Bullet Punch on Metacham following a Screech, Hammer Arm on Slack Off, and finally after swapping into Latias, two Silverwinds on Espeon after taking two Swifts to win. Now for Ame, 
Uh, she's depressed, to say the least. So, uh, you know how I had this really cool Pokemon called Kyogre that was gonna carry me through this whole entire Soul Link? Uh, he, uh, kinda died. Um, well, this battle started off with my rival Joey, uh, starting with Atropius and with me killing it with Typhlosion, and then his next Pokemon was Rhyperior, and then I switched into Kyogre and I easily killed it with a Surf. Joey then throws in the dreaded Obama Snow, and my Kyogre, which me stupidly, you know, thinking this is fine, I ancient power it, but then Obama Snow just uses Wood Hammer, which puts me at 3 HP, and then the hail that was summoned by Snow Warning kills off Kyogre. <gasps> no! <laughs> I'm in absolute shambles. Typhlosion swaps in to kill off the stupid snowman, and then Joey then throws in Haunter, then a Butterfree. Typhlosion makes quick work of them, and Joey's last Pokemon is a Gliscor. Typhlosion erupts and takes revenge on the final Pokemon of Joey's team. Man, this, I'm just so sad. This is so depressing. <laughs> Woodhammer is just too strong of a move. I can't believe we threw away our best pair right before the league. I mean, we can at least put Heatran and Shinx in for the replacement legendary. I'll start us off with Eren. Eren starts off the battle with this Slowpoke, and Diago uses Dragon Claw to one-shot. Next is Ho-Oh, the legendary from Gen 2, but Ancient Power is quite effective, so Diago makes easy work of that bird. Third up is my personal favorite Pokemon, Gengar! Gengar, having a very weak physical defense, goes down with one Dragon Claw. Then Eren follows with a Wooper, who immediately dies after being thrown in, and Eren ends with his ace. Dust Noir. I Dragon Claw the Ghost and use Metal Claw a few times to finish it off. I guess Eren turns out to be more of a ghost type trainer than anything else. Another easy battle for me. Well that went far better than Barry did, as did mine seeing as Eren starts with Masquerain and myself with Latios. And while I do have the disadvantage against Bug, Discharge goes crazy here with a 10 level advantage, getting the one shot on it as well as the two shot on Lapras following a safeguard. Not that it mattered though, since Discharge already got the paralysis on the first turn of connection. Third out is Wooper, hilarious, but Dragon Breath manages to do plenty enough here, KOing in one shot and leading the Dunsparce. I'm not sure what the best thing to hit this thing with is, but I go for Discharge for a third, then Dragon Breath to bring it into the red, but thanks to both a Citrus Berry and an Omni Boost off of Ancient Power, I figure I have to throw Miss Ball at it to KO it from at this range, and sure enough, I miss the damn range and it has Endeavor bringing me down to just 2 HP because of this, and I do not trust that this doesn't have a priority attack, so I swap into Bastiodon on a Full Restore, then seeing Dig as I swap into Regigigas on the attack itself, taking it very easily as I start going for Waterfall. I figure going for Fly afterwards, though, means that he misses, I hit, and we start draining turns on Slow Start, and sure enough, it runs out while in the air, so Fly misses and Dig connects. Not that it matters, though, as Drain Punch finishes it off next turn, leaving just Gardevoir to get obliterated by a stab dizzy punch to bring it into the red, KOing with a second following a wasted Calm Mind. One down, four to go, and I may as well just go straight into Bertha, as she leads with Totodile. Myself with Regigigas, and I just start going for Waterfall to hope for flinching so that Slow Start ends with myself at as high of HP as possible. And somehow, we get three flinches and a full restore, getting out a slow start and KOing with two Dizzy Punches going into Jolteon. Dizzy Punch nearly one-shots following a Thunderfang, but we don't get paralyzed all while Quick Claw procs next turn, letting Waterfall get the KO before another attack can connect, leading to Electabuzz third. Dizzy Punch almost takes it down, but with static paralyzing Regigigas and a Thunderbolt connecting, we're forced to take a second before landing another Dizzy Punch to KO, but that one ends up being a critical and brings Regigigas down to just 20 HP. I guess that means we have to swap out of this Ursaring out fourth and into, uh, probably Bastiodon? It has Rock Smash and can wall up against the normal type for days, and sure enough, even through a full restore and rest usage, the defense drops from Rock Smash make it almost a one-shot from full by the end. KOing and leaving just Shedinja. Of course, Wonder Guard is a bit of a problem, but thankfully I do have a way to take care of it with Rhyperior. Swapping and going for Stone Edge to KO and win the fight. Glad we had a way to take care of Wonder Guard. That could have been a disaster if I hadn't have thought of that. Next up for me is Bertha, who doesn't really look like a Bertha, more like a Martha. Bertha starts off the battle with Quilava. We love our starter Pokemon. I change to Whizcash and hit Quilava with a Water Pulse, taking down Quilava to basically 1 HP, but Bertha uses a Full Restore. I hate when that happens. It's an easy fight, and Wizcash, who basically became my discount Kyogre, easily beats down the Quilava. Next up from Bertha is Articuno. I switch to my Typhlosion and Flamethrower, that bird to a crisp. 
And as cast form comes out, I use another flamethrower to burn those wonder balls. And then Bertha brings in Mydena. Once again, flamethrower doing massive damage as Weevil is thrown in. I'm really getting lucky with my type matchups here, throwing yet another flamethrower to seal the deal. My next fight with the guy with the amazing afro, Flint is up next. Wilmer is up first, my Diago easily Draco meteoring it into oblivion. Flint next leading up with Infernape, I switch into Wizcash. The Infernape uses Calm Might twice in a row, which I totally predicted by the way, and I get lucky, one-shotting the monkey with an aqua tail. Next up is Cherim, we get as fast as we can and switch into Typhlosion real quick, who vaporizes his Cherim, and as we're fighting, I get the news that Meatball's Nidoking has died, who is connected to my Typhlosion. Uh, So rest in peace, my beautiful flamethrower. I'm forced to switch into Wizcash, who immediately gets pelted by Hydro Pumps. My Wizcash goes down to about 30% with one hit, but if my Wizcash stays in, uh oh. Not a great matchup for me, so I switch into Wormadan, who at least resists, and I Leaf Storm that fish. Thankfully, Melodic only Aqua Rings and doesn't use any Ice abilities. Flint's ace is Skitty. I totally forgot I had choice specs on Wormadam and I am forced to switch into Dialga. And I Draco Meteor that little Discord kitten. Overall, a pretty easy win, but losing Typhlosion is gonna be hard for my team. Thanks, Meatball. All right, back to me for Flint as this fight is a bit comedic. Him on top is the lead and immediately I'm thinking, oh God, he's Bruno. Uh, that's gonna be easy. Gen 2 is the easiest series of games in the franchise. As I swap from Regigigas out into Latias to one shot out with Miss Ball, leading to Drapion second. Oh, that sucks, I guess. I guess out to Nitto King as he sets up two layers of toxic spikes, nearly one-shotting with Earth Power, but that range, man, that damn range. Eh, at least it wastes a full restore in the process, but hey, we actually hit the range on the second try, KOing and leading to Crot on third. I go for Sky Uppercut to try to take advantage of that dark typing, but I'm a stupid idiot and miss, immediately being walloped by Crab Hammer to one-shot KO and take out Typhlosion in the process because of that pairing. That's not good, uh, but at least Poison Point triggers and does a little bit of damage to Crot on as I bring in Regigigas, getting Toxic Poisoned but Drain Punching for super effective damage to keep up the pressure, KOing on the second shot as Pseudowoodo comes in fourth. Drain Punch and Waterfall should do both pretty decent damage, but I'm fishing for the flinch on Waterfall since Hammer Arm is likely a part of this move set, and sure enough it is. So I swap out next turn for Latias to get that resistance and hopefully KO with Discharge, uh, but we miss it barely. Double Edge connects for some good damage, not KOing Sudowoodo with Recoil as a full restore brings him back to full. Unfortunately, Discharge doesn't even do half, so I opt to just use Recover here to get back some HP and fish for another Double Edge to put him in KO range. But of course, after doing so, I lose that HP from a super effective Sucker Punch, but Discharge does finish him off, leaving just Roserade. Well, that's good. At least it doesn't matter that I took a Sucker Punch, as I can just go for Recover to ensure I don't get hit with an Errant Crit. Then Miss Ball immediately gets the one sh- are you kidding me? A psychic type legendary with high special attack can't one shot a poison type Roserade? Eh, who cares? Just use poison sting and dies to dragon breath any. Are you kidding me? Stupid citrus berry, that was nonsense! The second dragon breath does it in following a sweet scent, but. Dude, just die already, you rose tinted fuck nugget! Are you okay over there, bud? No, this fucker won't die no matter how many times I click the button. Geez, I better let him calm down. In the meantime, Lucian throws in a Pineco, who is a bug? Wait, why isn't this guy a grass type or an ice type? This one doesn't even look like a bug. Well, anyway, I hit this bug with an ancient power and it goes down. Next up is Rampardos. They're weak to steel, so I just Metal Claw. Next up is Spiritum, who worries me a bit since he technically doesn't have a weakness, but Draco Meteor is just too strong. Parasect is up third, I switch into Heatran, and with a Lava Plume, that Krabby is deady. Tyrogue is Lucian's final Pokemon. I switch into Metacham and hit it with an easy high jump kick, enforcing that tackle to miss. It's so frail to my kicks! I have such easy games compared to Meatball. Hey Meatball, you good now? Yeah, I'm fine now that the Roserade is dead. Thank you. Two more fights to go as Lucian kicks off with Rampardos. Myself with Regigigas and I just start working it with Waterfall, doing half on the first shot as Screech hits, so I swap into Rhyperior to take a head smash for only around a fourth before KOing with Earthquake. Next out is Carnivine, so I opt to swap out into Jinx for the ice typing, taking a power whip that nearly KOs. Well then, I guess not. Out to Latias, who could take it way better as Dragon Breath does half. 
paralyzes, and allows me to use a second one to KO. Shuppet is out third, so I swap into Regigigas for the Ghost Immunity, then go for Fly to ensure I can get out a slow start for the last two Pokemon, KOing with two of them, all while not taking damage, but Grudge does take all my Fly Power Points in the process, which kinda sucks. Fourth out is Blastoise, so I just go for Dizzy Punch against Iron Defense, getting the confusion as slow start ends, and hitting another as Blastoise readies itself with Skull Bash. I'm not really sure how to prepare for this one, but I just opt to go for Dizzy Punch again, and see that there was nothing to worry about as it barely does anything. At this point, it's just a war of attrition between us, though Blastoise is clearly winning due to that defense increase, from both Iron Defense and Skull Bash. So I opt to swap into Latias on a Rain Dance, using Discharge as he goes for the Skull Bash Charge, and hitting a second before Skull Bash is able to connect in order to KO, leaving just... Do Duo. Well then, uh, thank you for the free Discharge fodder. With that, it's just Cynthia time, and I think I'll go first, since I think it'll be more suspenseful to see if Ame can beat Cynthia than if I can. She leads Shiftry, I lead Regigigas, and as soon as I see Nasty Plot, I know I'm in big trouble, all while Dizzy Punch connects for decent damage. She goes for Leaf Storm to undo the Nasty Plot, but also do a huge damage to Regigigas. Though it's only around 75%, allowing for a follow-up fly to get the KO as she brings in Vaporeon. Oh god, not again. It's 5v5 as I go for fly here, seeing I Aqua Ring set up, but avoiding damage thanks to the Quick Claw, then going for Drain Punch to keep me healthy through Aurora Beam. However, over an Ames fight, highest. Uh, okay, so we are at very low, low HP. Yeah, due to that, I think it'll be more profitable to swap into Jinx and use it to resist, then land a Frenzy Plant. Yes, for some reason, this was a TM. Sadly, it doesn't get the KO, but the follow up one does, leading to uh, Chimchar. Well, then, please don't die. I said please! Oh, well, flamethrower KOs, but we're still okay. This is just a Chimchar after all, so I bring in Rhyperior, taking Flamethrower and dealing out Earthquake as Noctowl comes in, uses extra Sensory, and then dies to Stone Edge straight after. Two left as Pidgeotto comes out next, hitting Air Slash once to flinch, but the second doesn't as Stone Edge once again KOs a bird, leaving just Linoon. However, I'm a friggin' idiot and swap on the turn she goes for Belly Drum into Bastiodon, but this is my best bet to hope for survival, going for Rock Smash over over and over again through a full restore to keep myself alive, finally taking one more slash and dealing out a critical rock smash to KO, and win the fight with three remaining party members left. Next up is my babe, Cynthia. Coming in with five Pokemon, I was a little overconfident, but I'm about to get my ass blasted by her, and I'm so here for it. She leads with Dragonite, which is a good matchup, and I Draco Meteor that boy so fast. Next is Kangaskhan, and I switch into Metacham thinking I'd hit him with my high jump kick, but this Kangaskhan just uses Outrage, which is a Dragon type 120 move, by the way. And my Medichan just collapses into a heap. And I'm just crying now. Cynthia is going too hard and I don't want it anymore. Heatran is my next best choice. And I love a plume that mama and her baby. Lapras is up next and I switch into Vermadam. He takes two Hydro Pumps in a row like a champ and Leaf Storms that Lapras. I get the news that my Heatran is dead from Meatball's Jinx. And now we're just here with three Pokemon. Let's go! Ha 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 ha, we'll totally make it, right? Cynthia's Exploud is next, and I switch into Dialga and I Dragon Claw. Luckily, I only take some damage from Exploud's Crunch, this leaving Cynthia with two Pokemon left, Clefable, who immediately sings Dialga to sleep. I risk it for the biscuit, staying in and just hitting the Dragon Claw button, hopefully waking me up as fast as I can. Clefable Metronomes and Psycho Boost, which luckily isn't very effective, and Dialga one hits that Clefable with a Dragon Claw. Cynthia's last Pokemon is a Ditto. We swap into Wormadam so fast, and Ditto copies our little bug boy. Thankfully, Dialga can just Dragon Claw that Ditto to death, and with that, I have become your champion of Sinnoh. With three Pokemon left at the end there, I really thought we were goners. The dread of having to start over from the beginning was so scary. <laughs> Thank God for Diago though. He carried us so hard and dragged our half-dead bodies across the finish line, winning us the battle and the soul link. And just like that, against the odds of Ame knocking out nearly two digits worth of wild encounters, Hey! We've made it through. But really, were there any odds against my legendaries and her legendaries, despite her using a paralyzed heal on Arceus of all things? You're welcome! Thank you so much for watching. 
Just a quick reminder that if you haven't subscribed, we're almost at 200,000 and I'm trying to hit that by the end of 2023. And make sure to both subscribe to Asagi Ame and follow her on both YouTube and Twitch. Both links will be in the description and I really have to thank her for being on for this. This was my first Soul Link and I don't think I would have wanted to do it with anybody else. Thank you again for coming aboard for this adventure. Do you have anything else to add, Ame? <clears throat> hey guys! Did you know that in terms of male, human, and female Pokemon breeding that Vaporeon